G'day, I'm Ben from Catch Pro Australia on the set of Lawn Care Skull Sessions with BJ Wallace. G'day, g'day. From TBL Property Maintenance in sunny Brisbane. Mm-hmm. How are you, mate? Good, man. I'm fucking tired, eh? Yep, we are all. Mm, it's been a fucking big season, really big season. I'll be glad when it gets a bit cooler and I can actually fucking breathe. It's funny. We've been saying that, right? And um, obviously it has been for us. And yep. other Queenslanders. Yeah, fucking up. But I'm hearing, um, you know, just some mixed feedback. Yeah. Uh, back and forth that not that busy down south. Really? Even down New South Wales, yeah. Really? You know, like not as not as wet as what it... Uh, I was speaking to Gary Ashton from Mozzie Lawn Stars and he sort of mentioned, you know, like if you dug a hole, you know, the soil would be dry as fuck. Fuck, if you dig a um, hole here, you can find enough water to fucking have a bath. Yeah, you'd hit a spring, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, um, I was just at the 40 and I finally got... I, it is drying out a little bit, but I I got to push into some shit that had like... I mean, a foot of water, and I was cutting it on the highest level, and I could just hear my my wheels just hit. They didn't want to grip, and mm. there was just like mud fucking flying everywhere. So, it's still not drying out as quick as I want it, but yeah, we're getting a bit of traction. Yeah, cool. Now, uh, a little bit of housekeeping before we get too far. Um, last week's episode, we did sort of have to cut it a little short because we were running heavy for time. So. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed that episode. It was yeah. like a little bit, you know, kind of behind the scenes yes. sort of stuff. That's um, it. Which was really great. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll run a part two when Duncan's up next. Yeah, so he's, be... he's not too far away from being up. I think there's a convention at the Star down the Gold Coast. So maybe we can coax him and um, Andrew Trifford up here. Sure. We can have a bit of a gangbang. So for everyone that was, you know, really digging that one, um, you know, we'll be able to do a sort of part two and piggyback on the back of that one. I actually just spoke to Duncan like 15 minutes ago and he said that he, um, he's had a few good texts and, yeah, people have responded to it well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's always good to have um, a little bit of a different style episode where it's not just all about the equipment. Yeah. Um, you can yeah. tell right away that Duncan's – just like a really clever dude. Yeah. Um, and even though, you know, not all of that sort of intelligence or business philosophies, it doesn't always carry over to the, to the lawn mowing. Yeah. Um, but you can certainly take some nuggets there. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, you know it, what, what it, it like all of his stories, he sort of had opportunities and he just fucking grabbed them and ran with them, which was pretty cool to, to see. There's not – you don't see that as much these days. People are like – Afraid to take the leap, and you I know, mean, still the one that baffles me the most is the getting dropped out of school and working at a bank. Yeah, that just yeah, blows it's still my bizarre, mind, isn't man. it? Um, yeah, like it, it just that I don't know. It's just for, you know, for a high school dropout, it's like go work at a bank. What? Yeah, straight in, that, straight in, that fucker. Oh. Um, so anyway, today's episode is brought to you by the Lawn Shed. Yeah. Um, and also Bad Workwear. Don't forget, if you're looking for a 10% discount, um, to use the code SKULL, all in caps, to save yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, what is the, what's the discount on the Lawn Shed? I can't remember. It's not 10%, but you get. It's, it's, it is like, it's around 10%. It's it gets a, you yeah. the contract. You just go and pricing. sign up under B, where you heard about the Lawn Shed. Ben and BJ which was skull us, session. Mother, which was us. Yeah. Back in, yeah. Back you in heard home. it here first. Yeah, you heard it here first for sure. Um, but, yeah, uh, big props to Mower Merge too. Fucking got some stuff during the week. I've got some new spindle bolts uh, just because I don't know righty tidy from lefty loose here. I made a little, little boo-boo, stripped a, stripped a nut. Which you need a also, torque wrench. Yeah, I do. See, we were going to come out with – did we, did we tell the story last week? I can't remember. Fuck's me. But anyway, you, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you got a, you basically got a fucking impact gun. Yeah. That was a little bit, little bit stronger. Oh, it's fucking, yeah. But what we, what we really should be doing and, you know, you should be using some sort of mechanical thing, right? To just, to just get them up there. Yeah. And then have a torque wrench with it set. And then just nip it up manually by hand. Yeah. Anyway, I know people will, will diss me for that, but. Um, it's the it, official way. <laughs> it's the well, you know what? It's the correct way, and you yeah. avoid things like this. Yeah. Um, especially when you're rattling them off as well. You know, stripping stuff. And, yeah. So um, don't forget, if you're a fuckwit like me, and you're a bit heavy-handed with your uh, agadaga, check out Mole Merch. They um, yeah, they <laughs> they stock everything. 
Yeah. I went to my local bolt store, actually two local bolt stores, and both of them, they're like, no, nah, we don't got that. I, I mean, like, look, they'd fuck. get it, mate, they'd get it in, but they, they wouldn't stock stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know. Um, but anyways, <laughs> today we're going to be balling with this interactive episode that, I mean, we put the thread out weeks ago. Yeah. Now, the main aim of this episode, I think some people in the thread were, like, a little confused. We're not necessarily talking about, like, game-changing pieces of equipment necessarily. It's more like your sort of iconic models of, you know, whichever brand. Yeah. But one of those types of things that was kind of like a staple in our industry. Um, and, look, I'm not sure that we 100% achieved that, but BJ and I do have our own, you know, list of just five or so. I could probably think of more. And, and we might just rattle these off as we go along. And we came into the industry at completely different times, so you were fucking 15 years before I even thought about it, so... Yeah. In fact, I had five, and I just, I've just bloody thought of another, <laughs> um, which I um, fucking better not be looking at mine. Uh, nah, mate. Eh? Um, but anyway, without further ado, did we have anything else that we needed to touch base on, Beach? Uh look, I'll just mention that uh, I'll put a little teaser out there. The events are back. For 2024, there are three events, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Sydney. Do you have an applause button? Uh, maybe. Uh, don't worry. We, 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 we kind of missed it. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but, yeah, so the events will be held um, around July, August. Um, stay tuned. There's actually It's actually a lot more professional than the previous one. The previous one was me just scrambling to fucking get everything together. This time we have a team. Um, all, like, we're going to have a bunch of proceeds go to... Um, ben. the, yeah, the children's hospital in each, in each state. So we're going to do the, uh, Royal in Sydney, the Monash in, in Melbourne, and obviously the Queen, Queensland, uh, children up here. So, um, Excellent. yeah, very, very close to my heart and a couple of the people that are on the team. Um, I might just mention their names because who cares now? Uh, Robert Shearer, uh, Louise, my wife, she's going to be the fucking, the, the tech lady, um, the crew at Moa Merch, both Will and Nicole uh, behind me, they have been nothing but amazing. Um, guess you, Scotty, Scotty Osborne, Scotty Osborne's on the team and so is Dale Packenham and obviously like, you know, these guys are all industry specialists and they, they know what they're talking about. Uh, some of the venues are fucking cooler than shit. Like, yeah, it's, it's going to be fucking baller. So... Yeah, hopefully we can get a bunch. We're hoping to get like fifty vendors there. So yeah, I mean we had a great showing last time. Yeah. Um. So bigger and better. Yeah. And uh, there might actually be. I might have time to do a kissing booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, that'll be fun. Maybe we'll fly D down to Melbourne. I don't know. I'll get fucking. I'll get give everyone herpes. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, should we just hook into this room? Yeah. Fucking oath. Okay. So. Um. I was actually going to read the thread, but I, um, m- my original post, but it was actually a video. Oh. Um, I, oh, actually there is some text, but anyways. Oh. oh God, now it's playing. You fuck. Um, anyways, we will get into it. So we're talking about pieces of equipment that were, you know, it, it's not necessarily like this, you know, wicked game changing piece of equipment. Um, because I think now, especially... There is so many of them. Yeah. It's it's even difficult to choose one that's a game yeah. changer. I mean, you know, if you pick a mower, it's like, well, you need a whippersnipper to go along with that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we have our first comment from JT, and he says it's the Ego 1300 hand blower um, and says it's a great draw card uh, to get people to take up that brand. Mm. So, so that's the, first the, one off the big, list. That's the big hand blower, the fucking... We'll just round it off one. to say, a, like, just in general, yeah. a battery hand blower. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit, that's what I mean about, like, what I was kind of aiming for is, like, these sort of iconic things that it's not necessarily you couldn't live without it or couldn't be replaced or it's just, it's one of those things that everyone got. Yeah. Before everyone was very brand, like, before the industry became brand specific. Yeah. 
or you know, like a lot of people, it's not like you would just see a rig with all one color. Well, on. there, yeah, there really wasn't like big box stores like Trade Tools and things like that to to go and check out Ego and um, Greenworks and Makita and Milwaukee. Those sort of things didn't really have much of a place in OPE. Well, what I found, well, that's true. But what I did find as well, you know, and this is all just me reminiscing and going back, right? The all your major key brands, you know, your your Honda still, Shinny, um, your know, Husqvarna's always been there and stuff. Obviously, Bush Ranger and stuff like that didn't exist. Yeah. Um, there's other brands like Kawasaki and Tanaka. They just, their lineups were there. Yeah. But they didn't excel <laughs> in every piece. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they have all become much more So one, one would have like an awesome snipper, but one would have like a better, like a different brand would have a better hedger set up. Absolutely. So um, anyway, my bad for the way I've probably explained it. Well, that's all good. Um, but, you know, maybe it might just spur off some more thought. Um, and, you know, possibly we could revisit this again. Yes. Uh, right. Jared Bywaters says the Husvana LB553 uh, SE, and uh, I'm guessing this is a mulching mower. He said it's the best that he's ever used. Now, oh, okay. um, this is along the lines of what I – I don't know how long this, this has been yeah. around for, but I've heard that this Husvana push mower – I mean, push or self propel, whatever. I don't know what it is. But I have, I have heard – you know, around the industry, I wonder if it's that's, a great. Is that the great one with the T? It's got like the T. Um, yeah, the, and it has like a press deck looking. Um, it, there's no photo of it here, but I I know what you're talking yeah. about, and it it does have a completely different setup. Yeah. Um, I think the main gimmick of it is that it's an excellent mulch, like a dedicated, yeah. dedicated mulcher. Um, Jared Summer uh, says the old Rover Pro Cut series. Uh, oh, full yeah. shoot, self-propelled, nothing will ever come close. Now, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Now, I actually had one. Um, I don't I don't recall where I got it. I might have inherited it from another contractor or potentially another business. Yeah. Um, but everyone, mate, raved about this Rover Pro Cut. Well, you've got people like Lee from um, from Pro Cut. He, he fucking has, has just sold his business off, but he has like – he was telling me at one stage he had like 15 in his fucking container because he just used to to bust them apart and, you know, just fucking Frankenstein these mowers back together because that's all he wanted to use. So there must have been something to it. I, um, yeah, I did I did have a look at them and, like, they have that hydrostatic drive system on top. So I don't know. It, it's a fucking cool concept. I don't know why no one else has taken it up. I mean, I guess... Realistically, again, we are only like one or two percent of the market, so we really don't get listened to that much. I think so. That one probably was made back when Rover was actually Australian. Yeah, before and they were like, "Hey, this is what the Australian market yeah, needs." Probably before Let's NTD make bought it. it. But then why, I could be wrong about it. But why haven't we gone back sometime? I just now. don't know why no one else has taken up the concept. But there could, there must be a flaw. Uh, there must be something that just makes it not. Um, I don't know. Not, not feasible, but... Well, look, there's things obviously about... Look, it, and do you have any mowers on your own? Pacific, on my list? On your own Pacific list? My, on my Pacific list, I definitely do, yeah. Okay, do you want to just yeah. push mowers or... Yeah, yeah, on? push mower. Yeah. Do you uh, want to just throw one out just Yeah, dude, it's on a Honda topic? 195. Oh, you fucking dog. <laughs> so I've, I've Did actually... Did you even have one? Yeah, no, I've got one right now. I've got okay. the Honda 195 Heritage. So I got the, the one with the um, engine brake. So the ones without that fucking engine brake were better. Um, the engine brake annoys me because you got to hold it on to fucking start it. You gotta, and it's not self-propelled or anything like that. It's just a fucking mad, like easy to fucking mow with mower. Yeah. I've got a Honda 195 on my list. Yeah. And I've got my list numbered, but it's not it's not in, in, in any order. But I've got a, um, a Honda 195 on my list and it's... Um, when I was trying to use the Google machine, mm. it seemed like a lot of one nine sixes were coming up when I no. googled one nine five. Fuck, do but I have a one nine six? I would have a one nine six. I have a feeling heritage. because put it this way, you're the one that when, wanted the one nine fives all the time, eh? Yeah, and they're the ones that I used to buy from the Deception Bay guy yeah, off old cobs. Yeah. Now, I mean, to even put it in context of how old these are, I 
They they were current in 03. <laughs> so it's 21 years ago. Um, All right. And I bought one for the same price as my first car. Fuck. 800 bucks. That's um, not far off my first car as well. Mm, so, and, and I've still got one. Yeah, I saw it around yeah, the side. She blows a bit of smoke, but it's yeah, all right. it's all right. Um, so... What were we talking about? <laughs> on the 195. No, I know we're talking Rover about Rover Pro Cart. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think that, um, I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I've had a bush ranger sitting here for quite some time. Mm-hmm. I'm not a contractor anymore. Um, and I mean, toward the end of my time at Greenscapes, we had bush rangers, but, like, I just didn't do a ton of, like, push mode. Yeah. Or self, like, self, like, I just, you know, like, Rusty can do it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I actually recently had to bust it out. Um, and it was beautiful to use. Yeah. Um, that's all we use now. Yeah. Oh, I've got the 21 Skag, but the other boys, that's like, they, they all have, I think we have like a 19 and three 21s. Yeah. So, and yeah. then I've, I've got the so, Skag on board. So this old 195 that I've got, it has the plastic top. Yeah. Not the metal top. <laughs> yeah. Um, the air filter is on the side. Yep. Um, but actual sideways, like it didn't, you know, like the cylinder, Mm -hmm. it doesn't have that. Oh, does it have like a little? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, obviously full shoot, um, straight up push 19 inch. Yep. Yeah. So, um, it was just, just a bloody fantastic mold. Plastic catcher. Yeah. Um, The plastic catcher is fucking the goods. People sort of, you know, going on about these fabric ones, but, um, I think the plastic ones just have better better airflow. They're tougher. I do get like you can be a bit more compact with the with the fabric ones, but I I love the old school. And all you need is a zip tie to fix it. I'm no fucking seamstress, so I got to sew the fucking <laughs> yeah the fabric ones back together. If I all get all of my plastic catches, I saw a dealer assembling one one day. Yeah, and it was like he was fucking. Putting the people's elbow on it every every <laughs> click. I'm like, man, he's gonna snap one of those tabs. Like, yeah. I'm not buying this thing. They're ex- back in the day, they were yeah, yeah they're, they're like expensive. 150 bucks or yeah, something. Yeah, they're not they're not much cheaper now, but and um, that's for an aftermarket one. Mm. So, so I reckon we're gonna cross over a lot on this list. I saw you write down one that number six that you were talking about, and I reckon I've already got it on here. That's cool. Hey, it just gives it more credibility. Yeah, um, right. Dean Anderson says napalm for those overgrown lawns. Fuck. Uh, Aaron Oates, Mrs. Uh, had a black mamba. What's a black mamba? Uh, it's either a BBC. It's actually a black, like snake from Africa, but yeah, I think he's talking about like a black mamba. A is BBC. Maybe, yeah. I think this is not equipment related. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> um, and we're the most unprofessional. <laughs> Jesus. I might have to sort of proofread some of these comments. Like I'm just <laughs> yeah. like full rolling down. All right. Cody Baker. Uh, the old green greenfield ride on now. Some of those old greenfield ride ons, there's they've got more than one mention in this thread. Yeah, and some of those old school ones were fucking iconic. Yeah, um, especially at the time too when they went to like a hydro transmission. Yeah, where it was like the forward and reverse on the same pedal, and you didn't have to change the gear. You could just <laughs> yeah. fucking forward, not nah, reverse. You know. <laughs> um, so I haven't spent a lot of time with any of these machines, but that has been like one of those things that like it, they, they've just never built anything quite like it since. Yeah, you still see people rolling around on them, especially around like, you know, we've got some quite you know decent acreages around here and a little bit closer to mine and you still see them parked out in the yard and people just leave them in the fucking yard. I don't even cover them up. They're like, nah, she's, she's fucking gone. Oh, for yeah. 40 fucking years, she'll go for another 20. Um, Nathan, uh, sorry, did you have, do you have any ride-ons on your list? No, I don't. Because no. Oi, Neva. Oh, Neva? Well, I mean, it just wasn't, you know, like, it's not necessary. Like, it can be current. Yeah. It can be current. And, um, you know, just freestyling off the top of our heads. If there was a ride-on right now, like a zero turn or a stander, um, what do you think would fit the mold of something that is kind of out there that is either the best in its class or has some sort of, has something about it that just, you know, makes it different? 
I don't know if there's something that makes it different. There's a few that I would have loved to have tried. Um, and I know there there's probably one or two still floating around. Like I would have loved to have gotten to try like a, a V like all the early models of the standards, like a V Ride one and like the See, the I heard that the V Ride two just kills it. Oh, of course, yeah. I have mean you, seen you the don't pad on a V Ride Yeah, one? I have. I mean, like, you know, it's just I know it's gonna be average to ride compared to the v-ride too but it's just a nostalgia thing i think but i want to try like the rights and you know fucking all the all the old tractors like i'd just love to try all the old stuff and see what it's like now but um there is one that kind of stands out from the skag lineup and it keeps coming up for sale and it's really fucking tempting is that cougar and it's like their catching mower. Mm. Um, I want to see <laughs> why it keeps coming up for sale because it could be a fucking piece of shit. I don't know. Yeah. But I know that it got rebuilt and, yeah, it just gets passed around. So it'd be interesting to see what- Same as, um, remember the old Bradley mower? Yeah, yep. guy called uh, Wade Woodley has it and um, he's- He's put a big Kawasaki engine on it. Really? Yeah, Will, Will got him the, the engine. Nice. But he's also- it's not paint. I don't know what they've done, but whether it's been it's it's covered in something, but it's all black. <laughs> it's like okay. full gangster man. That's mad. Um so yeah, in terms of a ride on, I don't know. Yeah, what, I think I would look, just like it, to try the old ones to be honest. Yeah, n- definitely nothing old school. Like no tractors or anything like that you don't want to roll on. I don't think anything old school really stands out to me. In terms of like, what about the OG like motorbike style zero turn like um, Duncan was talking about, like the very first Skags? Um, well, because I'm guessing was, that most of the machines sort of started like that. I think I saw. No, I'm not sure that they did. Oh, really? I think that one was pretty unique. <laughs> it was kind of like. Um, anyway, I think Ferris may have a current one of those. Really? Where it's kind of like you're sitting on like an old school chair. Oh. You have, it, you haven't I haven't seen, seen it, that's no. Like, and the Skag one was, well, the Great Dane one, yeah. I think, was like that. I think it was called a chariot. Skag chariot. That's uh, fucking sick. Great Dane chariot. Yeah. Um, now, look, nothing stands out to me except for I'm probably just going to have to go with the 32V ride just because that, like, I think with with that piece of equipment, you're replacing your push mower. Yeah. But then you kind of have the capabilities to still do an acre if you need to. Yeah. Um, and, and we know people are doing well and truly up to two acres. Yeah. That wouldn't be my, like I'd be over it. Uh, I only do an acre and a half here and I already want a 61. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that one, you know, would, would fit in now. Uh, Nathan says favorite, uh, battery gear is Husky because you don't have to reset the battery every five minutes. Um, I don't know the, what that means. Uh, I mean, with I think Husky he's stuff, talking yeah. about, um, it does say every five minutes in some of Australia's hottest ambient temps. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, we have heard of, you know, batteries getting hot and shutting down and stuff yeah. like that. I, Mate, in our climate, like, we're just always going to have that. Yeah. Um, even, like, man, no word of a lie. Like, my rivet gun, I've got a Milwaukee one. Yeah. And it's a good piece of equipment. And when I'm really going for it, like, I've actually put it in the fridge before. Oh, to cool it down. Yeah. The unit And it's itself, not the battery, it's the unit. It's the unit. Um, but once the unit starts heating up, it really starts sucking the battery yeah. and you can chuck a different batto in and it won't make any difference. It'll mm. still just be sucking the juice. I just think it's one of those things, um, where like in our climate, you know, if you're having batteries stored in toolboxes and yeah, you know, if you're using them, actually, I think I saw the other day, someone had a bush ranger push mower and it was like completely locked up. Or something like that, like it, like like it had seized. Yeah, and I don't know the outcome of it. Outcome of it, but I did. I remember I put a, a comment saying maybe just take the spark spark plug out to see if there was a vapor lock or something yeah. because it happens. It gets so hot here. Yeah, um, you know it's common. Um, anyway, uh, Luke Evergreen has suggested a flashlight. Oh, mad! Yeah, fuck yeah! Bit of equipment. Never used one of them out no. in the field. 
Never, um, never used one of those in the bedroom either. Ar- mm. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking KFC one. Have you seen those? <laughs> what? Have you seen the ones that are shaped like a box of KFC? Oh, uh, no. no. I'll, I'll find it and I'll send okay. it to you. It's I'm fine. sorry. I'm getting a bit of wind in the mic. That's all right. I'll just sit in front of it. I just, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Um, Aaron says the vintage Cox ride on tractor. Uh, oh, he, yeah. He remembers his uncle had one. Um, and similar thing to the Greenfield, like those dudes, yeah. man, they always went neck, neck and neck. I don't think anyone's going to fucking bring up the MTD Yardsman or anything like that. Fucking hell. <laughs> I had, I don't know whether, like I definitely, I had a green and gold one. Yeah. Um, we, Shorey bought it and the things that me and my mate used to do to that, that thing, <laughs> But then we obviously had one at the village when we took over the village. Yeah. Um, it actually ended up being a really cool machine for us at the time. I'm actually gonna, about to get rid of that. Yeah. But at the time, it – and because it was just only doing maintenance stuff um, and because it, it has a press deck, it used to actually leave a reasonable cut. Yeah. Um, can I uh, can I jump in with a random Mate, one? Any fucking time. So one of the best backpack blowers that I found when you know on the market was the PB eight oh three from Shindaiwa. Mm-hmm. Now I know you had the same one, no, see, but we had a different model. The PB was an Echo. Oh wait, what? A, the no, P, yeah, PB is an Echo. The you're talking about the eight. Uh, 803. It's, e, it's EB803. Oh, EB803. Sorry, yeah. yeah, fair enough. I did have one. Because I, try, I tried the Echo. What? I got the big one, but. But you know what? Also, you had the whack fuck double handle. Yeah. I don't know why the fuck Kids I had that. everyone. Because I don't think so, that model was out for very So I don't know oh, why. I know why. You got new old stock. Did I? Yeah, I guarantee you. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I, thought I was fucking in with a win, but it was actually trash. So my. <laughs> Good blower. My, it was a great blower. But just the... I've still got it at home. Like, it's still, it was still going last time I fucking gave it a pull, but it was just slowing down. But it had... So most backpack blowers now have the trigger and the on-off on the actual blower, you know, on the... Handle. On the tube. Yeah. And um, this actually had a second flexible... I don't know, like a flexible handle it's with just the like a big ex- floppy cock. Yeah, on the it was. Side it was literally like it was a BBC hanging off the side that you had with to- the acceleration and the on off. But then it was just like a little clitoris acceleration. Yeah, it was fucking. No, it was nothing. Eh? It was like weird. I would love for someone to hear how we're describing it. Yeah, then just go see you Google. just rubbing your thumb on your. Yeah, but then go and Google an image of yeah. this exact one, and that's what it was. Yeah, it was. It was a good blower, but fuck me, it Actually, was a bit weird. That's all it was. Yeah. It was. I, look, I don't think it was better than, than the other one. Than the other, yeah. You know, like if you've got a drink in your hand or if you're having oh, a curry yeah, or something, you know, it's kind of like a killer, right? But yeah. if you're just straight up working, it was kind of pretty comfortable. Yeah, you could just set and forget. Like you just put it to full and, and move it around. Um, but, yeah. but anyways, I had, which I assume was the one that preceded it. Yeah. And... I would agree that that was, you know, probably, look, I, I don't care what anyone says. It shitted over any still model. Yeah. Like I demoed. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, it definitely did. I, I don't know what the BR 800's like now. I haven't used one. so I haven't used anything current. Yeah. But the balls in that shinny, I mean, it was like, what, 76 or 79 cc yeah. or something, um, which is equivalent now to, uh, look, I don't know what the other brands are doing. I know. Bush Ranger. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, like, I, I got the same kind of feel. So I've got a Shindaiwa 770 and uh, a Bush Ranger BR 9000, and they're very comfortable and they're very similar to the other one. And they just have a bit more power I, and they're a little bit more, I feel a like little the cuter. Bu- I, think. I feel like the Bush Ranger. So that, that, what you're talking about, that blood, that shiny one, I would actually class that as an iconic model. Yeah. And something that most contractors ran because their backpack blowers just weren't that, um, the backpack long, blowers were not that common. Yeah. And the longevity. We, fuck we me. had, we had them because we were doing like 12 acres of leaves. Yeah. I only got them for the village. Yeah. Like it's yeah. And the, the longevity 
I actually did that village a couple of, for a couple of months with a fucking hand lock. Mm. It was fucking murder. But um, well, like the, I got like four or five years out of that blower. Yeah. And that was like it was just me like, yeah. and, and an offsider. So that blower was getting used every day. I would imagine that Rusty's still got mine. Yeah, I'd say he would. Possibly. I should just give him the old one so um, splice them. But what I was going to say, I sort of feel like the new current Bushranger equivalent is essentially the same machine just with some upgrades. Like there's a silencer nozzle. Yeah. Um, I think you can actually adjust the handle a bit better so it's a little bit more comfy for, yeah. you know, different arm. How lengths. dumb am I? The fucking handle spun around and I couldn't figure out why my revs were so high. And, oh, and all I had to do was just move the handle back. I was like, ah, yeah, true that's that. stupid. Um, John Clark has the first mention of the Shinny 230. Mm. It's the Shindaiwa 230. Now. So I didn't use that as a snipper. I used that as a as a dedicated hedger pretty much and pole saw. Yeah, that's well, that's sort of what the equivalent came out. I actually, I did have some 230 snippers, mm. um, but they were usually only backups or like me home. Oh, okay, it yeah. wasn't one that I – so I'm just going to do the, the, the honourable mention now, and it was at the top of my list. Not that it was number one, but it is the Shindewa T260. That's at the top of my list too. And I know um, there's a T270 as well that a lot of people loved, but 260. For everyday mm. use, man, like the 260, for, for those of you who have never used one, it was just – I mean, it did have some flaws, but – this old model that ran for like 20 years, it was just the go-to bipper. Yeah. Like anyone could say. Especially here in Queensland. Like the, you'd fucking drive around and when I first started, every contractor had a shinny. So, Well, see, back then, um, right before All Power had it, you know, the Grippos had it and, you know, huge dealer network over yep. there. They they really they really pushed and built that product. Now it's unfortunate because Shindewa now, I, I do think they have poor representation. Yeah, me too. The, the snippers are actually really good, mm -hmm. but because nothing was you know became compliant, that's why that two sixty doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And they uh, is it a two six two now? A two six two, and yeah. there's a two six three. I don't, I don't know what the difference is. So I I actually once I retired my two sixty, I got a two six two, and I loved it. Great snipper, but it just didn't have the longevity. Obviously, this all fucking stems from the. They weren't um, smooth. Is yeah, what? it just it's, it's all the emission stuff. Yeah, it's, the emission no stuff fault. fucked everything up. It's no fault of the brand itself. Yeah. It's um, um and everyone had to follow suit. It's it, funny, they're like, like, oh, the emissions, and then you know, you're turning your equipment over twice as fast. But the reason now that I picked um the L two one uh two six one from Bushy is because it's very similar to the T two sixty. And that's why like we've we've shelved everything. There's nothing left on either of our rigs or at our villages that isn't isn't a uh, 261 from, from Bushranger. Cause yeah. it's just, well, I actually have one, but I, I only use the battery here. Yeah. So I use the battery model. Um, and to me, like, I mean, it has its flaws with the, the, the battery Bushranger, like as a dedicated machine has no flaws. Yeah. What the flaws are is the battery, um, the battery size and your charging power. Yeah. That's where that becomes an issue. But th how I feel about my Bush Ranger dedicated battery snipper is exactly how I felt about the 260. Yeah, nice. It just feels comfortable in your hands. It is just a good rig. <laughs> you want um, to hear a funny story that I haven't told you yet? Um, so on Tuesday, uh, Monday, sorry, <laughs> Will got fucking tagged by a, a wasp. Uh, on the Friday, no, on the Thursday last week, and he had to had to have the Friday off because he had a reaction to it. And anyway, I, I went in to help catch up some, on some stuff on the Monday, and um, <laughs> Dion and I, we were doing some shit on Friday as well together. And on on the Friday, we were cruising along and we were headed to the dump, and we heard something, and I just looked in my side mirror. And I hadn't put the fucking snipper back in the equipment defender oh, properly. Yeah. And um, 
and she's fucking skidding along in front of all these cars and it's hit the gutter. I'm like, fuck. And we were on um, Old Cleveland Road. So, yeah, I'm trying to pull over. Finally get somewhere to pull over. Fucking, I'm jogging. You know, I'm not a jogger, so I look like a fuckwit, like a crackhead in high vis. And I'm just like running up, trying to fucking find where my snipper's gone. This dude has fucking already pulled over, put oh, it in mate. put it in the back of his car, and he's fucking driving away. And I quickly pulled out my phone and started recording him. And I think that's the only reason why he actually pulled over and gave it back to me. And uh, fucking one, two, fucking away she goes. Yeah. So I was I was shitting myself because I was like, that's only that's like only fucking twelve months old. Oh mate, you I was like, I don't. You ain't the fuck. first person who's had a piece of equipment <laughs> fly off the back. Of oh the man, that's the first time it's happened to me, and I was fucking I was like mortified because obviously it was two lanes. People are fucking swerving. I just got a new whipper gripper. I was like, they're gonna fucking run over my fucking whipper gripper. Yeah, oh, it was. Um, yeah, it was scary for me. So, um, back to the thread. We finally have... <laughs> what do you mean? I was so scared. Okay. Um, we've got to mention, uh, there's still FS85. Mm. Now, this has actually made my list. Really? There's still FS85. I mean, it was like... honesty is the best policy. I've only ever used steel battery gear. So... Never used a bimper from this steel. Is, mate, this is one of those machines, right, that reminds me of, you know, like when you're watching like an American sitcom. Yep. And you see the old New York cabs from like the 1960s, you know, the big yellow fuckers, the yeah, big yeah. square fuckers, they never change shape. <laughs> That's like the FS85. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what's current anymore, but that FS85 was just... Look, completely different to the 260. Like, if you really loved using a 260, you probably wouldn't like using this FS85. You had both? I had both. Um, What happened was I was always a shindy guy. Yeah. And when I bought Shory's business, which was like 2011, I think, um, I inherited all of his steel gear. Yeah. And um, the look, what I didn't love about it is back in the day, if you had a, a shinny snipper or you know eventually they came out with pole hedges and things like that all the gearboxes and splines and stuff like that would cross over with all your tanaka um kawasaki at the time yeah and some other things whereas still we're running square shafts the gearboxes mounted completely different nothing was compatible they didn't want to fucking join um, the crew they did not join they us. did not like the equipment bakaki um, or Augie. The docking. <laughs> docking, that's a good one. Um, but, however, the FS85, I think, that did stand in a class of its own. Yeah, nice. Um, and they might have something current that is similar. But, mate, it was just like this fucking orange and white just, like, didn't look good. Yeah. They had lots and lots of grunt. They had a bit of a hiccup there for a while. A lot of people were, especially on LMCA, because that's, you know, where I get most of my see most of the complaints and stuff but yeah for a little while they're still were getting a bad rap i think it was around the same time that honda was getting a bad rap for their gearboxes yeah i mean i just like i said the world's changed the industry's yeah. changed obviously um, that feedback has been taken in by still because i wouldn't you just don't know. you don't hear the same but but see that's what i mean about you know some of these things that came out you know maybe mid late 90s yeah they they kept the same everything till twenty you know seventeen or whatever it was. The spark arrestor is always what you hear about with um with the steel stuff. And it was the only other unfortunate thing that would happen with steel is that the coils would go eventually. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know like back in my novice days, you know, it, basically when the coil goes, you got no spark, no nothing. Yeah, and it's not seized, but it just. There is no compression or nothing. Yeah. And, you know, I had a dealer. He was like, oh, mate, this is going to be, you know, making out to be a big deal. Yeah. And when I finally went to a different mechanic, they're like, oh, mate, we probably got a coil here and kind of showed me how to do it. And yeah, I realized that I had, you know, like, I mean, I must have had five to ten different pieces of steel equipment, um, you know, like the hedges and yeah. the pole hedges and things like that, that all the coils were the same. Yeah. So, you know, it didn't end up being a big deal, but 
because I didn't know, then yeah. One of the dealers out there should do a fucking a masterclass or something on on basic servicing. I know Will does a lot of content through Moa Merch for you know like bits and pieces, but um, he should I, he yeah. should go on the road. I'd fucking think, pa- I'd pay money to go and learn just basics. Um, anything that'll keep you out of a shop. I mean, if you are a contractor, YouTube should well and truly. Sorry, mate, we're playing Tootsie. Yeah, fucking. Y- YouTube should pretty well get you through these days. You know, you should be able to find yeah. most of that. And I'd love for an Australian dealer to take the time. Yeah. You know, and just just have a workshed style video channel. Yeah, it's different though when someone like I'm a visual learner, so YouTube is awesome for me. But it's different when someone's like. Now, if you hear this noise, fucking this is what you need to look for. And yeah. Like, it's only like, you know, good mechanics that will sort of know that sort of shit. Um, did you have any other bipper dippers on your list? Uh, no, but I did have something. I did have the 260 and the 230, uh, especially the multi-tool, uh, yeah. honourable mention. But I had the Tanaka-style commercial head. Now, I know that is what you wrote down. No. At the end? No. Oh, it looks like Tanaka head from over here. That's sweet. But, no, yeah, the Tanaka-style no, head. No, it's not the head. They're like an aluminium UFO-style disc and you used to have to load the line yourself and you could put the fucking the gun line in it. You used to grind them out, didn't you, so you could get that? I used to grind them out so you could get some BBC. In yeah, it. that fucking but, 3.3. But then later on they come out with a series with bigger holes in it. Yeah. And I know um, that lots of contractors still dig them. They are. My dad runs one. Yeah, the bo- like I did run one. The boys went to speed feeds and I kept up with the Tanakas. But I went to speed feeds. I've told the story because people were just shattering my work. Yeah, they're were, a little I had bit, to lead by example. If you're a fucking if you if you're not doing your like you do diligence Mate, and checking them and straight user error though. Yeah, like you, you gotta got fucking something check them. Cast alloy. Can't just be smacking it on the fucking concrete. Yeah, on the footpath and on the fucking yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, they're mocky. He comes in, starts kissing me straight away. Yeah, he's like, oh, I fucking love you. Um, so <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's a that's a really good, um, that's a really good, you know, yeah. suggestion on. I there. mean, lots of people still use them, but realistically, like, I think they once speed feeds became really prominent, which they already were when I when I sort of took up the Tanaka style head, but. Yeah, it was just good for low-profile snipping like we were doing a lot of, like Scrub Road, we were doing a lot of that sort of flattening and, um, you know, pairing it with three (laughs) fucking three-millimeter diamond edge or fucking um, thrasher is is just the bomb, so. Um, Our mate Turtle says the still FS250R Bipper Dipper Opti 2 Full Synthetic 2-Stroke Oil. Damn. That's Holy a mouthful. shit. Do you even need to say that much stuff? Yeah, fuck. I keep, um, I keep a bottle of that in my second drawer. I keep a bottle of that in my dick. <laughs> oh, oh, yuck. <laughs> That's messy. Um, so, yeah, two-stroke oil. I've got to be honest, by, by the end of my time, I actually bought still oil as well, even oh, though I didn't run right. any still machines. And it was based on the fact that you could just mix less. Yeah, okay. like it was a more concentrate mix. Um, it was, it was, <clears throat> sorry, it was coloured. Yeah, which I also really liked because so it's synthetic and yeah, semi synthetic were two different. One was red and one was blue. I always went with the pink dick. Yeah, but toward the end, I did start going with the blue one, which I think was the better of. Yeah, um, it was expensive though, but you know, it's expensive if it's, but you use less. Yeah, that's um, it. You gotta wait and. Up. It it used to have a particular smell to it when it burnt, Ooh. and I kind of liked it. Very nice. Um, so good work, turtle, eh? Yeah, fucking hope, turds. Save the turtles. Yeah. Um, Oreo Keith has a comment here about his uh, accelerator grass catcher. Oh yeah. So um, obviously, I mean. I don't know how to comment too much, but he that's his opinion, mm-hmm. um, which he's entitled to. So um, Never used one. I've, I've used one. Never seen one. Oh, yeah, I've seen one. I've used one. I um, Obviously, I had one yep. uh, before the Catch Pro. So, um, I mean, works just the same as the Catch Pro. Yeah. I think uh, we have an edge 
a significant edge um, in terms of the to, consumer. Because you don't have to buy a bracket for every fucking every shipment. Because uh, I don't want to get too far into it because it's not. Um, Yours is a bit more universal. Just leave it at that. Oh, look, it's more universal, but I just think as an actual business, yeah, it's much easier to order a Catch Pro than it is to. And I'm actually speaking from my experience. own experience. Like when I bought an accelerator first before I developed the Catch Pro, um, I, I got one for a completely different machine. Yeah. Off a dealer like in, I don't know for sure. I think they're in New Jersey or something. Oh, really? Like, yeah, because you can't really buy them direct. They have yeah. a dealer network. Um, and, you know, it's an eBay thing. Um, and once it's here, mate, that's it. You know, there's no you. You buy stuff here from a dealer online. You're probably going to have issues with backup and support. Yeah. But you buy one from somewhere twenty hours, you know, flight or a different world away. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have some issues. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, moving on. Mark Ladaway. He something to do with a walker. Uh, I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually going to be. It's, a, it's actually quite a, a reasonable paragraph. Uh, he said you can't go past the Tanaka oh, shit. handheld products now. He does uh, say here he still uses a 15 to 16-year-old petrol hedger. And what do we have on Ben's list? Oh. It's not a fucking Tanaka head. It's a Tanaka a hedger. hedger. Look out. So this, I, I want to state first that I would never use a handheld hedger these days. Yeah. Um, uh, specific brands have reached out to me about, you know, product development and stuff. And I've said, see that hand hedger piss on it. (laughs) Um, I don't, I don't hate them, but I don't use them that often. So I just think these days with short range, uh, pole hedges, yeah, especially because they articulate well, except the ego one, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you, you really, you're getting the same result, but with far greater upsides. Yeah. Do they, do you think the they have quicker tip speed? I haven't looked into that, but I'm feeling maybe because I've seen a lot of people who do like boxes and things like that. Yeah. They, they use hand hedges because. But I think that is mostly because when you're doing small and fiddly stuff, you don't automatically think to yourself, fuck yeah, I need a pole hedger. Yeah. But, but these days, if you can get yourself a short range, um, I just don't want to bend over to fucking do everything. That's what I mean. And that's what the hand hedger does to yeah. you. You have to bend down. You have absolutely no reach. The ego one has a fucking super long bar on it. Um, yeah. I think it's potentially 60 centimeters, maybe a bit bigger. Yeah. I mean, look, I do think longer, the better so, as well. Yeah. Like, but, um, but yeah, definitely. But, but this Tanaka hedger, it's in my list and it was like, if you're a contractor in, I can't speak for all markets, but let's just say Brisbane. You went down to your dealership and you got sold a Honda Pushmile or self-propelled. You got sold a Shindewa or an Echo Bipper Dipper. Yeah. Um, and that was back then when they were different companies actually. But, yeah. But either one of those two. And you got, you always had an Echo Blower. You know those orange ones? The PB2520. I don't know what they were called. That's exactly what they are. But yeah. the one before that was white. Oh. And I had one of them, but then it it always moved to the orange one. Yeah. And, mate, they were just trusty old machines. I think I had mine but, for like four years. But the the next piece that you got was a Tanaka handheld hedge trimmer. And Mark Ladaway goes on to say, um, you know, how great the swivel rear handle was. Oh, um, did it have like an articulating handle? Had an articulating handle. Oh. Um, I didn't actually really use that. Yeah. Um, but I know, you know, like Rusty, like someone like that, mate, they get amongst yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, well, I um, use the Ego one. It's got like six, I think six different settings, so it's pretty convenient, but... <laughs> Yeah, whatever you can do with a, a hand hedger, I pretty much can do with a pole hedger. So I just go with one piece of equipment. Yeah, look, I know, I know we haven't really done this comparison game. Mm. We kind of did a little bit with the two hundred and sixty and the Bush Ranger current. Yeah, uh, 
don't know what the, the Mueller situation would be, but from what I can see from the market, now I haven't used this, so I could be completely wrong. I kind of feel like if there was going to be a replacement for this Tanaka Hedger, it might be the Makita handheld. Yeah, that's pretty popular. Yeah, just because it has a mega high tip speed. Yeah. Um, I, I, look, mate, the, back then I just, I don't, I don't even you know. Wouldn't if, have, you I wouldn't don't know, know if we messed with, but <laughs> I can tell you now. You can fucking trim up a tight. There was you the research you could bush, do mate. was minimum. Like what what how would you have researched any equipment? Now you can fucking deep dive into every fucking review that they've ever had. You you know that there's about forty YouTube videos on every single piece of equipment out there. So you everyone's really at a big advantage to to find oh. what's right for their busy. <laughs> I just wanna read uh, a little bit in this paragraph. He said that he had to change the the blades. Um, he had to replace them last year. The only place he could buy them was France. Oh my god! Um, Wouldn't it have been cheaper just to buy a new fucking hedger? So he said one hundred and twelve dollars delivered for both blades. Damn! Who, who could complain with that? Exactly. Yeah, true. Um, he does piggyback here and say the only other product I wish was around is the double blue striped woolen jute garden bags. Um. Oh. I I sort of can't comment that on that too much, but um, I think I've got the I've got blue stripe ones, but I don't nah, know if they're you, double. The we, jute, we never mess with woolen ones. I used to have wool pack. I used to have um, fucking white wool pack ones. Okay, I burnt through those real. I big. only ever mess with the canvas ones. Yeah, I think maybe maybe mine are like a canvas fucking nylon composite or some shit. Mm. They don't feel like the jute ones must have been. Fuck, that would have held. I mean, some, garden bags would have garden, held some moisture, though. Mate, garden bags are garden bags. Fucking I think the only time, yeah, I think the only time that they have a floor in them is when people are dragging them along the ground. They get holes oh, eventually. Fuck yeah! But at fifteen dollars, I mean, I'm yeah. always, I'm constantly. I just have a stack of them at home now. The boys. And then you got that crew out there that fucking throws them on there. They throw them on their rigs, their zero turns and that, and they get like melty on the exhaust. Oh, that was me. Yeah. When so I had my, when I first got my country clipper, I used to back it in and I used to push it up against bags and I'd be like, what the fuck is that smell? And it'd just be melted to the actual machine. I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Um, Mark also wants to know as a side note, what's the introduction and ending music of the potty? Uh, right. Why? What do you want to know? Yeah, what do you, what do you want to know? About? To it, it legit says opener, close. That's all I've got. I, I don't know. I just found a free website and fuck me, did I spend some time looking for music that wasn't like goofball music. Um, James Meowto. Meow. I'm a fucking mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> I got secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> Um, he reckons he's Husvana five two five. Yeah, the LST. Now, no, no offense, Mioto. You're a little bit young to be fucking talking in this conversation. <laughs> We're talking about equipment that come out when your mum was still wiping your ass, eh? Mm. Pulling your skin back to wipe the cheese away. Ooh, oh, that was heavy. That was heavy. Um, no, look, that's only. Uh, a partial joke. Um, <laughs> the first half was a joke. The second half was a regret. <laughs> You're fucked, cut. Um, no, but but he's a bit young, right? Yeah, he's a bit to be young. talking about iconic old school fucking pieces stuff. Of but you know what? He probably knows more, more about fucking industry than us. Like, nah, mate. Yeah, yeah, fuck. No, who I'm not knows? Keen on that. But who I knows? do like Miyoto. Yeah, and I loved um, seeing him get his shirt ripped off him. Yeah, that was pretty fun. So that's what actually made me like him. <laughs> Um, he also goes on to say the atom, and I think that uh, I think he's that's got a you great there. suggestion. I think he's fucking got you there, Ben. I do think, yeah. yeah. So, but the atom is in a class of its own. And to There's be honest, nothing else like it. I've had three of the cunts, and I've never used one. So I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Oh, I used one once. Did you? Did you use one? At I fucking at I, the village. I've got I've yeah. got one sitting underneath my house right now. That I got service to bring it back up to brand new. Never used it. Just to toss things up a little bit. And I think I, oh, I've oh, said this on here, but um, I had an idea for me and Rusty once at the village, or it might have been, I don't think it was me and DJ, but we said that 
we'll start doing the snipping in two man teams. Yeah. Someone flies around on the atom, and then someone softens all the edges. And it was actually good because especially if you got a whipper gripper, if you're on a normal um if you're on a normal bib, you don't have to change your stance at all. Yeah. You don't have to go into an upright. Yeah. Um and if you're on the atom, you just know anything upright is what you focus on. Yeah. Um and we were doing a maze of stuff like um and it's just you know what it's like when yep. you're out there just fucking I sure do. You know. Um, Taz Chamberlain says the Skag 36 V ride. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like I think, it's, I think the 32 is probably a bit more of an icon now. Um, but you know, see, they're relatively see, here's the new. Thing, here's the thing, right. And Taz, I'm talking to you as well. I don't think I used the word iconic in the thread or in the video. Yeah, I know. So I think it was more of just like. We I kind of posted something, and then as the suggestions were rolling in, I was like, ah, I just don't know if that's where, where I wanted to be. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, totally. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you've got a thirty two or a thirty six V ride, um, I think they're probably pretty special pieces of equipment in your yeah. own arsenal. Um, yep. You know, I think especially if you're talking about like you know most other common mowers would be like a forty two inch sit down. Yeah. There was a sick yeah. fucking deal on pickles. It, or I don't know if it's gone or not. Yeah, it's got a bloody catch pro in it. Yeah, it comes with a catch pro. Mm. What the fuck? Um, yeah, bloody someone it's someone like needs eight, out. Eight someone. and a half grand. Yeah, mm. I think I think it was a buyback. What are they retailing for these days? Uh, I think they're like seventeen. What do you reckon my V rod's worth? Mm. Forty eight. Don't know. It's only got not even four hundred hours on it. Yeah, but you can't. You set it on fire. I'll buy it. Well, I didn't set it on fire. <laughs> it got set you, on. You fire. You melted one of the fucking one of the little yeah. star washers. Yeah, that's all. That's it. That's fucking all. That's Mate, cosmetic. Gives, that's, a of, gives a bit of fucking. Yeah, character. it does give a character. It's a bit of cosmetic. Uh, Jeff McPhee, the Cox thirty inch cone drive. Th- that's it. Thirty inch, thirty inch cone drive. Cone drive. Um, yeah, if I can pull a few bones and get on that such a, such a versatile machine. So this 30 inch, is it, would it be an old school rider? He couldn't be talking about a push mower. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. What a fucking, what's a fucking cone drive? A cone drive must be, um, I don't know. Do you have a help button? Like help, uh, like, help. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> all right, now I'm helped. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. It'd be, it, I mean, I wish I knew more about yeah, this. Yeah, fuck, I'll have to get on the Google machine. Now, humongous. What's he got? I, I, I use that tough voice because he's, he's, a, he's a tough guy. Yeah. Uh, he's a lady in the street, but a freak in the bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, he has a, sorry, 100% Shindewa T270. Now, yeah. if you're a big fuck like Humongous, you can actually rock that all day. Yeah. I found it was a little too heavy for me. I never got um, a chance. Mm, that good rig. I mean, just as good as the 260. Yeah. But more CCs, bigger. It was physically bigger. I don't know how, but he he actually threw up a post, oh, could be a year or two ago, but he found a, like a brand spanker. I think he fucking, if he finds one, he just hoards them. I would um, too. Yeah. I mean, look, just. Hugh says, fuck the environment. <laughs> Give me my shinny. Um, yeah. And I've heard him talk about this in previous threads. Yeah. So, um, Kyle, uh, Echo PB8010. Yeah. Biggest fucking, it was the biggest backpack blower at the time. They now have a 9010. There's Mo. Oh, fuck. He said I got it because BJ recommended it. Mm. It mm. is one of the fucking craziest blowers on the market. You totally influenced him. Oh, my God. Um, but I they must don't like say, influences these days. Oh, you can't recommend shit, eh? I'm not even fucking, I'm not even doing it on purpose. Just fucking have a passion. Even Tyrone Cashin says, I second this, an absolute beast. Mm, yeah, it's a fucking monster of a blower. Uh, it is loud, though, and that is the one thing that I did, anyone who was going to buy it, would be perfect for Kyle, but when we took it into the village, people were like, oh, what the fuck? The world is coming to the end. 
But um, no, nah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. But it, yeah, I can only imagine what the nine ninety ten sounds like. Um, I haven't seen anyone post one of those up in Australia yet, so I don't know if they made well, it here. I think in the backpack space, you know, like I don't think Bush Range is prominent. I don't think Shindai and Echo are that prominent anymore. Mm. You just see a fuckload of stills, which is fine. It's um, funny that Shindai and Echo aren't up there because they fucking they have the exact same models for both. Shindawa and Echo. So I'm like confused at why they've it's got all about double the, the product. Distribution channel. Yeah. And um it just is what it is. Yeah. Some brands have, you know, poor representation. Mm. Um, not across the board, it's just on certain products. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those spaces that I think that's, you know, Shinny and Echo kind of played in at first. Yeah. And then you know, much like the battery market now, um, it's become saturated and certain brands just have that corporate machine behind them and yep. still is one of them. You see a lot of Huskies and Red Max. Yeah. Which are the same, same machine, thing. by the way. Same thing. Same face. Same face. <laughs> face off. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I look with the- I've got to be honest, man. I And, and I, I just hate knocking brands. And it's not even a real knock. But- I just didn't like the, the still backpack bowlers. Mm. I mentioned that I've absolutely fucking loved that FS85. Yeah. Um, but it's just their backpacks. And it made my list, man, as iconic. Yeah, okay. Um, but the backpacks, like, I just, mate, I didn't rate them. Yeah. And, like. I mean, that was back in the day before. <laughs> to hear like, something real funny. <laughs> tell me. Tell me. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But, like, when you look at one, you know how they kind of have, like, on top. You know, like the, sh- the shinnies and that are kind of like a box square. Yeah. But like the stills kind of look round. Like a knob? Nah, like, well, okay. But like, <laughs> I just always looked at them and it just reminded me of like some sort of sad face. Oh. Like, and that's <laughs> not what Like when you see it in the front of cars or the back of cars, you're like, that looks like a fucking frowny face. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that's not why I never got one. <laughs> it was just one of those things you wanted where all I was the like, happy- I was like that's one of them sad face blowers. <laughs> um, Shim Daiwas had happy smiley faces on that side. They just had the big fucking box head like, we yeah. come here and fucking let me blow you. Yeah, the fucking, the 770 out. that I've got is really boxy. The the Bush Rangers are really nicely put together unit. Everything's a, quite easy to get to. Do you have to. a blue or red Bush Ranger? I have a red. See, it matters, you know. Yeah. The red ones, mate, they're not, I've got a blue one. Yeah. I'm just a piece of shit then. Mm. Fuck me. Uh, um, <laughs> Wait, can I can I have a mention? I know course. this is fucking something that everyone is so devastated Don't even about. Don't ask me, mate. Just come Dude, out with it. Honestly, the Sylvan 16 litre backpack sprayer from Bunnos was fucking iconic. I don't know anyone who didn't have one. I had. I think Did I have like three. List? No, I didn't. This is this was written fucking. Th- this was written three weeks ago, oh, five weeks ago, whenever we fucking did list. it. Fuck you and your list. You picked up my list. Um, oh, but we, I mean, if we cross over a few times, that's fine. But, yeah. Those, now, like I said, it gives it more credit. Those backpack it. sprayers were the shit. And I still have one. The only thing that's wrong with it is I fucking, the hose, like, must have got too hot at some stage. And it just fucking blew up like a balloon. And I just couldn't resist. I had to pop it like a pimple. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. Like, I haven't even gone back and looked for parts to to get a new hose, so... I, I mean, should. I'd tell you, so they're discontinued, right? Yep. But... You can get a 12, I think it's a 12 litre. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, what the fuck? So these days, um, and actually out of all the things that I still do lawn care related, spraying is actually a, a pretty big one for me yep. because I spray all my perimeters now. Yeah. Um, and I have weeds galore. Yeah. But anyways... Um, Oh, look, these days I use a Milwaukee and a Bush Ranger, both battery operated. Yep. Um, but that old school, uh, what was the brand again? Because all I had was butter, butter Sil- spray. Sylvan. So they they do like the big. They let me they tell still everyone why. Let me tell everyone why they're just a fantastic sprayer, right? Most people have a Bunnings located within fifteen to twenty minutes of yep. them, um, and I think that's being generous. So you could just roll down the bunnos. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always in stock. Yep. 
You could get one for at the time they were ninety nine bucks. Oh shit! I got. Oh sorry. Was I think 100? they were one hundred and sixty. That's oh, I, I might have meant I might have meant one hundred ninety nine yeah. maybe or something like yeah, that. Yeah, mine were one hundred and sixty. I think when yeah. I got them. Okay, so um, you know, like I, I thought, great price point. If you had an issue with it, you could just bring the fucker back and swap it out. Yeah. Now, um, I usually don't like promoting stuff like this because. You know, I have a retail business and yeah. that's just not how it works with us usually. Yep. Um, but when it is out there and when it happens, you know, and you got just like a kid at the counter who's like, eh, go get another one. Yeah. Just like, leave that one here. Yeah. Um, the There was one or two downsides. One downside was I found having a concealed, dedicated battery was kind of shit. Yeah. And look, at the time, I didn't know anything different. Yeah. But, you know, like the Milwaukee, you know, you just open up a flat and bung a batter in. Yeah, well, that's the same with the the Bush Ranger one. So Jatco actually make those, and Bush Ranger is obviously partnered with Jatco. Fuck, I don't know how they're not the most popular sprayer. The external battery, the runtime, the runtime fucking... Okay, so I don't like bagging brands out i've never used a flow zone but i think you get like an extra two plus hours on the on the bush ranger than you do on the flow zone i think i don't flow know zone, anything about the flow yeah zone. so neither neither do i so i can't i'm not going to judge them harshly but when i look at things i look at the specifications um and i just i just looked at the bush ranger, and, the bush like, ranger has, um, and how much easier is it to fuck how many bush ranger dealerships are there and you can unclick the hose yeah, you can unclick the hose and fucking like, wash it out properly. And can I also just say mm. that was that was my suggestion? Really, the unclick hose? They didn't already have that. Um, no, <laughs> they when they were developing it. Oh, okay. Um, no one asked yeah. my opinion, but I always remember. And these days, people are more efficient and everything like that. Yeah, but. In the seasons when we used to spray our canvas and stuff, yeah. you know, you have to wash, wash the bottle out. out. Yeah. And for the life of me, how many times are you going to trip over that fucking wand? <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. You know, and then you got to tip the, the thing upside down yeah. and next thing the bloody handle's up here. And one time it, like the handle got caught like in my pants. And when I lifted it up and pulled my pants all the way up and I started hanging out. Oh, did you? Yeah. You actually hang. Oh, I thought um, I thought I'm just like a I don't hang that long. I'm kinda of like a girl, it's just all fixed. My pants in place. are pretty on. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a girl, I just rock an out. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, like a fucking prolapsed belly button. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Um, um no, but anyway, I think having the the hose that you can take off yeah. is a real sleeper, man. Yeah. Like because even when you store them Fuck yeah. <laughs> if you can even just have a separate little friendship spot where you can just store the hose. Yeah. I think that's great too. The um, cheap it's, plug for bush ranger. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny doing the research for because that's what you, like you can do that now. You can actually sit down and if you can sort of preempt what you need for the future, you can kind of look really deep. I can't believe how much money some of these fucking backpack sprays. Or I've seen like backpack sprays all the way up to like twelve hundred dollars. Wow. I'm like, fuck, that thing better be massaging your perineum while you're fucking walking around spraying. That's that's a fucking pricey. Actually, I'll tell spray. you what, one with a little cooling fan would be great. Yeah, that's that's back, true. One of the backpack blowers has that, hey. So needs it for Rusty. Yeah, the PB He's has a fucking sweater, man. So they have some sort of event system. I think most of them have event system now because the the Bush Ranger actually came with a a thing that you can block it with. And so did the Shindaiwa. So I think most of them have, have developed some way to suck cooler air in the back. So mm. that's that's awesome because obviously that's that's a fucking when you're blowing for an hour, two hours a day, like we do at some of our villages, it really does make a big difference. I don't know about the the battery models though because I've never really used a, a battery backpack blower. Well, I. Um I have, but I haven't been able to mess with one, you know, like, I just, I wish I could, I, look, I'm just pro battery everything, mate. Yeah. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I kind of lost the thread because I let it bloody do, do you its want, thing. <laughs> do you want to, I've got another one here. It's got a cry face next to it because I wanted to 
honorably mention it as to how shit it was and I bought it on your advice and I know that you had better success than I did. Mm -hmm. The Maxi Pro Hedger that we bought out of a container. Oh, fuck. Dude, it was the fucking worst. Here's you fucking saying hand hedges are shit and you told me, go get that one as like your first. I this bought it. This is a it. decade ago, bitch. <laughs> a decade. It was fucking worst. I don't reckon I put an hour on that fucking thing before it went in the fucking shed and I think I only just threw it away not that long ago because I kept the blades off it because I was kind of naive. I kept the engine. and Let's tell the real story though. Okay. Tell now, and I'm not saying you're a liar. I'm just okay. saying 10 years ago, long yeah, time. Yeah, it is long time ago. Um, but... And you know what? It may. Have, how long have you been in the industry for? It'd be coming up to ten years. Okay, so we, it was like when that, I started. So, so yeah. legit ten years ago, right? Um, so someone locally here used to import um, equipment from China. It was in Thornlands, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was fucking yeah. right near where I live now. Yeah, and they called it the brand Maxi Pro. And mate, you could pick up these hand hedges for a hundred bucks. Yeah, and. It was right around the time that you could no longer get the Tanakas. And so around this time, you know, it, maybe hedges were costing like 300 bucks, maybe. Yeah, I think they were a little bit more than that. Maybe, yeah, okay, so maybe around 400 Yeah. And we had already used, like we were already on dedicated pole hedges for basically everything. Yeah. But when we moved into the villages... We, you know, you had your odd time where, okay, you're up against a retaining wall yeah. here or you're, you're nudged into a corner there. And I found these hand hedges and I was like, you know, for a hundred bucks, we use them like an hour a week. And an hour a week compared to what we were doing on pole hedges yeah. was, you know, like people used to say like that we were the hedger men, you know, <laughs> like we would spend hours yeah. on pole hedges, just doing streets upon streets of hedges um, so the, but you know, yeah, you're right. They were fucking pieces of shit. Oh, I've but never if you had something break on it. It's true. It's a quick fix. You can kind of just go and get another one. I've never heard so much metal on metal in my fucking life though. The, the ping that it used to make when it was fucking ro- doing its rotations. Well, you can't, you can't burst the seal, mate. We talked about this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was just like, bing, 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 bing. I was like, oh shit. So that was, that was my introduction to hedging and it, Served me well for a little smidge, but straight into that fucking T two thirty with the hedger attachment. Um. So, Tony Sins, another one for Atom Edger. Yeah. Um. And I, I mean, think, they are I think iconic. They've been along for around for a long time now. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I don't know how long I've shown you. I don't even. Th- yeah, I don't know either. But they, you know, they stayed with the times. They've got battery models and stuff like that. My fucking pop, who's dead, right? He had one, and I, I can't say it was an Adam, but it looked like, say, half a mower. Yeah. Half a push mower. Yeah, lots little... of people have them, which I'm surprised they haven't popped up on it, here. I don't, know, I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's a, you see people that do up like old Scott Bonners and stuff, they also have these these old these school edges. That, these box with blades on it. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like a fucking blade box with yeah. a with a handle on it. Reminds me of like cool. one of those old school, like cartoon characters that mm. they just put fuck all effort in. Like, fuck, <laughs> let's just draw a box and put eyes on it. Yeah. Um, but that's what, yeah. Um, Tim Smith says FS250R has to be uh, Still's biggest loss. Um, I wish I knew more about this, but I, I would assume this is like a bull handle. Yeah, rig. pretty big, yeah. Just, I'm just basing it off the numbers. Yeah. I'm you just know? guessing as well. Um, I don't know why I haven't got into Still. We have a, we have a skag dealer that... It has a steel shop. I go in there. I'm like, ooh, ah. But then I never. Southside Mower Center is a dedicated steel shop. Oh, really? Steel Danny's shop a steel now. shop too? Um, yeah. I just don't know why I've never. I don't know. Maybe I just like different stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, look. It did match. They got my, everything. It did match that, all my mowers. Yeah. They got everything that everyone else has. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Um, but I think it is mostly about dealership yeah. stuff. Like if you've got a dealership close to you. But then again. And I don't think it's, from what I can gather, it's just not the same as what it used to be. But, yeah. You know. Back in 10, my day. 10, 15 years ago, it was a big deal if you got a steel dealership. Yeah. And they trained you differently. You Yeah, fair enough, you're a mechanic, but they they trained you in sales. Yeah. And so if you weren't using that right oil or if, you know, you took the guards off, like things like that, that, that was impacting all your warranties. Yeah. 
that other brands just weren't really doing. And I think that hurt them a little bit. I don't think it hurts them anymore because, you know, it's just a different different industry now. But, yep. uh, you know, I, I remember I walked in once and I was like, oh, man, there's too many rules with you kooks. Hey, I'm going to go get myself a shinny. <laughs> um, and, and that was just my experience. Now, uh, Shannon Hopton says, Bush Ranger Utility Mower with a 196cc Lonson. Um I don't have any experience with yeah, any uh, utility mower. No, but I have seen them chat through a fair I, bit of stuff. But, the, you know, like the these utility mowers look kind of tough. Yeah, the Mulch Master gets fucking crazy rep. Is that the Victor? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it gets plenty of, plenty of fucking um, air time. And I'm surprised we haven't seen one of them. Yeah, no one said I mean, toe cutter or anything like that. Those old school <laughs> fucking Victors. Um, Paul Ellis agrees with the fs85 that was yep. great he said also the the old kawasaki snippers um i was wondering remember when... the model now i had i had an old kawasaki yeah. did you is that the one that got stolen no you, i don't think did, so you had something stolen eh? no, was that the tanaka uh oh i don't know now mate but the 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 kawasaki that i had was an incredibly light machine it was it was balanced really odd. It worked, but it was just it just was not like anything else. But yeah. I had this random issue where the exhaust was melting my fuel tank. Ew. <laughs> and it was just a simple gasket, like a heat yeah. guard. That just came off. That like yeah, like I, I lost it one day. Yeah. And one day I was like, fuck, I've got all uh, you know, fuel leaking on me. And so I've gone to turn the cap, then I fucking threaded that. Um, but and because it was melted, <laughs> do you think no, it was, it was somewhere a bit? else? Oh, I just fuck. you know like. But anyway, um, it was actually a great machine, great price point. Um, but like I, I mean, and now like I don't know anything about the distribution and dealer networks and stuff. Like, it's not like I remember seeing them out there that much. But yeah. Yeah, this particular Kawasaki that I had was, I remember I loved it. Um, yeah, you want to add something? No, no, no. I was just breathing heavily because so, I'm fat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, sorry, Paul Ellis goes on to say the the two-stroke Super Swift Subaru mower engine on the old Rover Utility um, said it destroyed everything in its path. Um, that's weird. A, a, a Super Swift Subaru mower. Mm. Well, uh, my first on a, uh, engine on a Rover. That's my like, fir- my first engine on the Walker was a Subaru. <laughs> Isn't that fucking yeah, weird? It was fucking was it called? Um, it was like a Robin something. Yeah, like, yeah, like a yeah Subaru yeah. Robin. Yeah, and then it fucking died. I think it ended up with Maxi Pro engines in it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, fucking that were cheap. Um, <laughs> we go went through a few of them. Uh, Bowden's Lawns and Gardens. Says simple but underrated, a good pair of seckies. Mm. Um, I've only found that out in the last couple of years. I I don't buy expensive equipment because I'm a dog for losing it. And with your little stuff like that, right? Yeah, mm. and the the boys like they don't they don't have to do a lot of secky work until it's winter time, and then I just get them a new set from Bunos. But they're actually starting to get a little bit more expensive. Due to uh, inflation, so I think I will invest a little bit more. I've just got a nice pair of Fiskars, but I know a lot of people spend a lot of money on their um on their shears. There's and their yeah, fucking there's, and their seckies. I, I got I got, and I'm not the right person to recommend anything because I've had really expensive pairs like Felcos and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and like it's all we used, and then I've legitimately had they're like pink and blue. And I still have them. Yeah, were they Chibis from Bunnos? They were so. It was before we actually had a Bunnings in our local area. No way. They were from. Do we have a Hudson's Hardware? It, <laughs> it, so back then, what was it called? It was called Morton's Hardware. Holy fuck! Was that near Wynnum High? Yes. Yeah. So I used to live a couple of streets away from that. And when what I was a happened kid. was we were on a garden clean up, and we lost one of the expensive pairs and I've ducked straight down to there, grabbed a pair off the shelf. Yeah. And I legitimately still have them. That's um, awesome. And I do a lot. Cause like in my own yard, I potter yeah. a lot. And at this current place that I'm in, I don't have that much. I still potter. 
But at my old place, like, I could even have, like, a row of hedges. And I could have just been there casually with one of my kids, you know. Yeah. And instead of getting out, like, a hedger, you know, I used to hit stuff. areas with seckies and, you know, all sorts of things. Just just pottering. That's yeah. what I mean. Um, so they've done a shit load of work. Don't have time for that shit nowadays. <laughs> um, oh, mate, even still, like, I got... I've got these golden canes and I pretty much burn all of them. Um, and yeah, so I chop them up into little bits and burn them. Yeah. Yeah. So they still do a lot. Um, but good pair of seggies, I agree with. Yep. Um, I would have loved to have seen an iconic brand in there. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't fucking know many brands of like, I think the Japanese ones are really getting a good rap these days, but I don't know. I've just only, only ever had like, the Fiskars are the most expensive. I think they were like 60 bucks. It's like fucking, um, I fuck it with more expensive ones than that. I'll lose them. Yeah. Um, Sean Andrews says um, it's Raynella Mowers in South Australia. So R E Y N E L L A Mowers used to have a Rover body with a Honda motor. Absolute oh. beast. The beast. Um, the best motor with the best catching body. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I never heard of them. Neither I sort of that. was wondering, is this some sort of... Next time we do a thread, we'll have to say, make sure you add pictures. Gary Ashton comes out with this weed whacker thing. I've got one still. And... I know exactly because I... No offense, I've... but they're, they're fucking shit. Oh, yeah. It's a fucking weapon. It's... You ever had one fail on you? Never. Come on. No, I've Actually, never had one I fail. I think I've got I've listen, got the metal one. So they came out with ones with plastic tabs as well. Yeah, this one That's a of, fucking that's a killer. That's a cow killer. You could fucking murder a cow with that. But do you remember the development? We actually both still had country clippers at the time out at fucking Red Bank Plains? Somewhere like that. Yeah. I had one for that job. Oh and really? It failed on me in like ten minutes. Yeah, no. Um, but I think also when you look at the packaging, you're like, no, nah, this is fucked. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I agree with this Gary. This one actually if- has, it's got an Australian label on it. Yeah, they're Australian but product. The, um, I don't know, just, yeah. I I think there's better options now, but I think they were quite iconic. I actually got one given to me by a mower shop when I first started. And I was like, oh, what's that? They must be good then. If they're giving <laughs> yeah, they're just fucking really? giving them away. <laughs> nah, Get it in I, a fucking show bag I think from the just, Echo. Look, I, they probably are awesome. It's just, it's never been my space. Yeah. You know. Um, Gary Ashton also goes on to say the Ego $1,300, uh, 1300 blower. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's two mentions for that one. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Anthony Hahn. Sun protection adapter cap. Oh, I think that's the um, one he wears. It's like a, it's got like the back flap and you can wear headphones with it and shit. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It looks like one of those um, Middle Eastern. Like a hat. turban? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can say it. You can say the word turban. <laughs> no, I'm trying to th- I was yeah. trying to think of it. Um, I was, at first I was going to say none. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because it does look like a fucking nun's headdress. Yeah, I wouldn't wear it. Yeah. Um, I, but I've seen him wear it. Yeah, I am. Um, um, which is fine. Look, it's better better to be smart, right? Oh, fuck yeah. Well, um, I mean, I'm waiting for a text today to see if I got the all clear or not. So once I turn my fucking phone off flight mode, we'll see. Yep. Um, but, um, yeah, I haven't seen anything like, I mean, it just it looks hot. Oh, look dude. at the fucking. What, what isn't fucking look the, hot? Look at the picture of it. Yeah, I know. The the thing yeah, is, I can't like, breathe. I fucking I'm mowing down the waterfront, Guess the and I go, "Yo, oh, fuck yeah!" You'd be clouding in that. But you got to fucking wear long pants and long sleeves. Fuck, it's a murderer. I did mm. eleven. I did a legit eleven hours on the machine on Monday, and I was fucking sweating from my knees. I'm glad it's. not. I had sloppy knees. Mm, I'm glad it's not that hot. To, I've, I've actually. It's not feel, bad today. I feel like I've got a migraine. Not, oh no! Word of a lie, yeah. And those ones aren't good for me. Yeah. Uh, Benny Brown, new Skag rep, says, "Let's bring back the Skag Cougar." Oh, another one for Cougar. Um, I mean, I don't really know anything about this machine, but I can only imagine the reason why they never went ahead with this model is it just couldn't compete. Yeah. 
I that's what I'm I thinking. Think so. I, don't, like, I, I haven't heard that. I, neither have I, but, but I don't I've think seen it's it change. Space. I've seen it change hands a couple of times, and you know, I think it'd be a sick machine to have. Um, I don't. I also don't think you can judge it on this old machine that's floating around. No, no. It, you know, it, like yeah. you can't. I think you can only judge it based off. We know so much about the Skag company now. Yeah. And I think if they thought that that product had legs, yeah, that they would, they would have pushed it harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, but funny enough, I mean, and it is true. Like I. I just think these days with Walker and Gianni. Well, I wasn't even going to say Gianni yet because Gianni's kind of like a newcomer. You yeah. Know, last half a decade. And then you got Gorilla as well. That's even. But you cool. used to have the Toro Direct Collects. The, yeah, and then they changed to X Mark. There, there's a few of those. There's, I think Green Option actually must have a Toro deal and they use those. They always use them, yes. Yeah. It's funny um, that, that Hustler doesn't have anything. To for the direct collect market, you'd think the amount of fucking options they have in all of their models, you'd think that they would have had a direct collect in there somewhere. I mean, from from what I can understand, pal, like I think just you know Walker and these ones that you know like that's what they specialize in. Yeah, they're very specific machines. They, they really are. Yeah. Um, I just think that they own that space. Yeah. And I'll even tell you something that I mean, this will probably piss off all the Walker people, right? But I talked to Corey Ballard about, hey, let's let's take a look at some proper walker blades. Yeah. Um, and he just said that there's just not enough volume. And it, so it just like amazed it. me because, you know, they're pretty prominent here. Mm. So you'd have to expect that that's only a teeny tiny percentage of their actual market. And, you know, Corey's telling me like, you know, I'm just not, I'm just not messing with it because it's just not that popular. People yeah. don't want to dedicate bag. Wow. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, well. And even. He would know, like you'd obviously have people getting on the statistic machines. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it is tough. Like if you've got an 18 inch blade with a 16 mil hole in it, for example, yeah. you're looking at about three or four brands that that'll cross over. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something to consider, but you know, like he's carrying Skag thirty inch blades. Mm. You know, think about that. That's true. Skag yeah. thirty inch blades is what he has decided to carry instead of Walker blades. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah. I in saying that, like, I don't see a lot of content from people using Walkers. There's only one that really stands out in my mind in the US. So he does a fucking fantastic job, but. Yeah, realistically, it's only the one. And I follow a fair few Americans. Yeah. Um, oh, I just don't take as much notice as I used to. Yeah. Um, I've actually reached out to him because I'm going back to the US and once Duncan told me, I reached out to Paul Jameson and a couple of the other dudes over there, Kenny Morrison. So I'll go and catch up with him, give him a cuddle. Good old Kenny. Yeah. He fucking, I think it was, he texted me. Three days before the show last year. Yeah. He goes, jump on a plane, here's my address. I was oh. like, dude. And he's like, just do it, man. Just jump on a plane. I'll, <laughs> I'll fucking drive you there myself. <laughs> and he's he's in Baltimore, so I don't know how far. Baltimore to Louisville is probably a decent drive. It's probably, it's, Louisville's kind of in the middle. We're, yeah, so Baltimore's so, yeah. on the east. Um, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if you, like, totally understand exactly how far away we are. <laughs> um also don't have a passport. Um, Sean says Salvo 212. Uh, is it Fusilade? F-U-S. Yeah. So it's chemical. It, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, to kill grass in garden beds. Um, what's so different about this to Glypho? I'd say that it doesn't kill the other plants. Okay. So actually that's something that we've fucking had an issue with is grass creeping in with such high volumes of growth. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. For the life of me, like, I just, I can't understand. I mean, all my gardens are fucked because of the floods, but, um, you know, you can't understand, like, my my plants are fucked. Even my heart, like, agapanthus, everything got drowned. Really? But you have a look in your garden bed and I've got all these 
Mate, beautiful cooch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful cooch runners, man. They're just so look, sexy. They just look glorious. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm surprised that um, some more chemicals haven't had more of yeah. a mention. Well, I mean, um, they may have been taken off the market for a reason. Yeah, DDT. Yeah, fucking double dick. Well, um, what was that one that we used to use? I only just threw it away. Dimethylate. Oh, really? It was, um, yeah, you used to spray it on um it was a it was a pest pesticide spray. Yeah. Um you used to like a man sooty mold, yeah like, and everything that the azaleas get hibiscus. Oh man. fungicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so I've got But it was yeah, it was just great for everything. You could spray it on the roses. Is it bay bathroid? That's the the one that is like the pesticide, I think. That's what I've got a old school tin of that. I just won't give up. Mate, this thing I use I've talked about it before. It was so concentrate, (laughs) you needed 80 mils and 20 liters of water. Fuck. (laughs) Um which is powerful shit. Yeah. Um someone cleaned out a shed, a customer, and they're like, Oh, do you want this? And it was just all these eh? random glass bottles with all these faded labels of fucking oh yeah, just Bit of fucking Agent Orange from back in the day. I'm yep. like, yeah, nah, nah, it's cool. You can dispose of that. Do it safely and do it as far away from my fucking property as you can. Um, we have uh, Colin Kelly says, Makita Power Seckies. Oh, okay, um, yeah. And I think that this type of stuff, you know, like it, it is in a class of its own. Yeah. I know you demoed um, maybe not the Makita ones, Milwaukee's. Yeah, we had the Milwaukee ones. Yeah. Um, they're fucked, man. They're scary. They're you, they're like full force. Do you ever play choppers. like Russian roulette? No. Nah. Like, look, look at my finger. Nah. And you put your finger in, and then Never. quickly pull it away. Never. That fucking freaks me out, man. Um, I need my digits. So, um, yeah, I think this is a good suggestion of something that is kind of like in a class of its own. Yeah, I know that you know all the power tool brands have them, but. It's very. It's a very particular type of. Oh, look, I don't think your regular garden guy needs them. Yeah. Um, but if you do a, t- a shit ton of pruning, oh yeah, detailed imagine, pruning. Imagine being at a race course. You know, like, like all that, your fruit all trees and, roses and your roses and things like that. Yeah. I think, um, you know, or if you're fucking lazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we like I said, we're not we're not one for pruning, but there was definitely value. Like you could cut through some decent shit with the Makita uh, Milwaukee one. Yeah, I know that so. Hey. Um, did you have anything on your list that we haven't touched on yet, Beach? No, dude. Everything. So, because I, I got like a little bit of a cheeky, greedy one here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the Whipper Gripper. And, you know, like I truly believe out of all the shit that we sell, I actually believe when you're looking at, you know, competing products or products that look similar, I actually believe that the Whipper Gripper is just in a class of its own. Yeah. And always will be. To be honest, I sent you a text, what, three days ago with the new Darwin's group. Um, no disrespect to Darwin's group, but they've gone a totally different way and it fucking looks not good. I, I think so we, they should have just stuck with the OG. If everyone can remember the Timu thread um, that was on LMCA and someone said, oh, you know, look, you can get these for, you know, 30 or 40 bucks landed. <laughs> So my guy that builds the Whipper Gripper just ordered a couple. Yeah. Um, not the Darwin Grip copy. <laughs> he just ordered a couple of no-name ones. Yeah. And he gave it to me and said, do you want to chuck this on one of your bippers? And I said, no. <laughs> um, no. Well, my biggest issue is, like, I can't ever use anything that where the handle faces inward. Yeah. I can't use that now. Um, and the the pivot that we have on the Whipper Gripper, and look, people probably don't want to listen to this. It's a shameless plug. I know it. But I just, when I was thinking about all these sort of iconic pieces, it just sprung to mind. Like, I, I just don't think that there's anything else like it. No. And the feedback that we've gotten, I think what, the Australian industry also needs to realize is the Australian industry is actually a direct result of the, the whipper gripper is a direct result of the feedback from the Australian industry. Yeah. All of these things, you know, okay, this clamp wears out. We need it to go up to this height. We need it to do this, that, and you know, 
Like that's what we poured into this. And when you look at these, like I'm not against Chinese manufacturing at all. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think at Catch Pro, I need to do more of it. Yeah. Um, but what's always going to be the issue, and I think that this is happening in the American market as well, the people that are developing this stuff are just not using it. They don't understand it. Yeah. And certainly the Chinese got no fucking idea because they're putting umbrella clamps on these things. And you know what? They would be giving them to contractors to test, but this kind of comes back to what I was saying last week with Duncan. If if they're getting paid to do testing and stuff like that, which I know a lot of Americans now are getting actually paid, I feel like they become less of a representative and more of an employee and an employee is never going to risk their paycheck. So. It's hard to say, but look, it's hard to say. I, I don't know. I, I still don't think if we just take the Darwin group, for example, yeah, I'm not really sure. Like having dealt with them personally, I'm not really sure that they take any feedback on board. Oh really? What, what feedback have they taken on board in the last half decade? You think about when we got our first Darwin grips in. Yeah. To they've had five versions since then. It's like they what were has changed? actively making them worse. But what has ever changed? Yeah. The only thing that has ever changed is they're constantly looking for a way that that thing can pivot up and down without compromising the overall integrity yeah. and longevity of the product. That's all they're looking for. They haven't found it. Yeah. Um, but something that's really cool is that we have a new version coming out this year, oh. which we didn't want to do. Uh, we are both really happy with the product, but we do have a little bit of an issue with this right and left thing. Yeah. Um, in terms of customers being able to order and figuring out if they're right or left-handed. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have an ambidextrous model. Oh, nice. Um, and the there is a downside. The upside is that right-handers um, will be able to fully capitalize on everything that they can now. Yeah. Unfortunately, lefties, we've got no option. The handle has to face inward. Yeah. Because, um, but we figured at about 5% of our market, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, and we have some ambidextrous models out there in the hands of users that have right and left-handed employees. Yeah. And they fucking love it. Oh, that's good. Um, we're going to upgrade our wall thicknesses a little bit. Um, and maybe add a new color and um, we might just s- slightly upgrade our pivot system. So um, we're really I like, excited I like the black it. color. It was, it was good. <laughs> I could see it clearly when it was sliding across the fucking, across the two lanes. Yeah, but sometimes you just need a change up. Yeah. No, that's, that's true, man. You need to get some new eyeballs to it. Um, but, yeah, look, the Whipper Gripper, that was kind of like a selfish one for me yeah, where I right. was like, I just don't think that there's – like I just, I just think that um, when you compare it to what else is out there, and realistically, like yeah, the overall barriers of this, you can't, you're not going to be able to evolve this product in too many more ways. Yeah. So what are we going to do? What's everyone else going to do? Yeah. Fair um. Enough. And yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm just not sure that anyone else is with it. I think, I think some of these people have to use one. Yeah. Like the people that are developing it. Well, they have fucking to use one don't for tell a them because they'll fucking steal it. <laughs> no, this is to us anyway, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, and anyway, if anyone ever took on, any, if anyone in the US ever took on any of our design traits, um, which number one, they won't because you can't mass produce it easily. Yeah. As a handmade. Yeah. You know, handmade, right? Um, but if someone over there did, it only gives us credibility. That's it. Yeah. True. Like, oh, okay. That's that's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah. Fair enough. So yeah. Um, but did you have any other honor? Even no, though there's nothing I'm, on your list, is there anything that springs to mind? Well, I'm I'm pretty tapped out. Like, obviously, you know what? The catch pro is up there. Definitely as an icon. That you know, every fucking every second post I see on Instagram stuff, there's a a V ride with a catch pro or something like that. Um, and that's my algorithm. It's probably fucking. Mm. You know, sort of set to that. There's a lot out there now. Um, another one that's a fucking cheapie is a dustpan and brush. 
fucking the old iconic dustpan and brush for me anyway. I don't know why the boys won't use it. They're like, nah, it's cool. We'll use a rake and our hands. I'm like, you just don't know. You just don't know how good a $5 fucking. But the pan becomes your hand. Yeah. But you know how much they are now. They've gone from like $5 to fucking $12. i am like, oh yeah, I don't want you guys breaking those. Someone needs week. to buy the, the pan mold. The pan, yeah, the pan mold. Yeah, it's probably like they're a pumping them out for $150,000 fucking pan mold to punch out fucking $30, uh, $3 fucking pans. Um, 12 and a half grand uh, mold in China. Yeah. Well, there you go. We could go back to manual arts and make manual uh, metal ones. Yeah, true. Oh, well, I actually have one. Do you still have it yeah. from manual I, arts? I don't reckon I made it. I reckon I racked it off some dweeb. Yeah, okay. Fair um, enough. But, yeah, I use it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Is it I, don't, I don't know if we if they do stuff like that anymore, manual <laughs> arts. I don't know. <laughs> it's too unsafe, hey? Yeah, probably. Fucking cotton wool, kids. <laughs> have I ever told you the story about what we used to do in manual arts? No. All right. I never used to do this. Because you I did. Thought it was too, no, I didn't. I thought it was too extreme. But some of the really naughty kids used to think it was hilarious. <laughs> Remember those big fucking mallets? Yeah. The wooden ones? The wooden ones. Yeah. Wooden head everything, right? Um, some of the naughty boys thought it'd be hilarious to grab one of the saws and just start fucking going at the handle. <laughs> so that when the teacher's doing his demo. Yeah. Remember they used to do the demos? Yeah. And there was no, like, there was just, um, like, there's no chairs and shit. So everyone's <laughs> just standing around. And then bloody picks up the mallet to go bang something, eh? And when he comes for his upward thrust, <laughs> it just gives way. Oh, fuck. Holy fuck. That used to cause a commotion. Yeah. It and rip someone's head off. Oh, man. Um, yeah, that's pretty wild. That is wild. That's a fucking killer. Yeah. That's manslaughter. Yeah. Um, anyway, no one died. So. Yeah, well, fair enough. Um, never okay. actually hit anyone. But um, yeah. Yeah. You got away with it about two or three times before they realized that. Someone saw in these motherfuckers. <laughs> the, the cut is too clean. <laughs> um, all right. Well, yes, sweet. we've had enough, guys. Um, once again, we so, sort of apologize for not being consistent. Yeah. You, you're probably going to see a little bit more inconsistency from us just for a little bit yet. You get what you get and you don't um, get upset. <laughs> yeah. um, we are about to, um, as you're listening to this, we should have a whole half a container of Equipment Defender arrived. So if you're waiting on any orders, you should have got a shipping notification, I would imagine, by the time this comes out. Nice. Um, and we should have a ton there to order, which would be shipping immediately from when you order. So little heads up about that. Very cool. Uh, and just quickly, we also do have a new Catch Pro coming out this year. Ooh. Not going to go on about it yet. 2024. Um, but we have a new model coming out, which is very exciting. Mm, very nice. So um, until then, I'm at Catch Pro. He's at TBL. <laughs> and I'm actually going to mow my lawn. I'm going to see what else I have to do today. Peace. Later, alligator. Later.